study uh, officially our lecture today. Um, the first section we are going to study, we call this measure of central tendency. Uh, what does that mean? Measure of central tendency, you can understand that as if you are given a data set and someone is asking you say, tell me where is the, where is the middle point? And then um, a follow-up question might be, uh, what do you mean by middle point? So it turns out there are four different ways to say that middle point or central. Uh, the first one we are learning is the mean. That's that the most common one that we say average. So the formula we are using, everybody, uh, is we add all those numbers. Say we have x1, x2, up to xn. Adding them together, divided by n, that's our average. And we are using a notation, everybody, x bar for that. Uh, so uh, when you write down that, you can use, uh, I mean, sometimes uh, you see that I write down as a capital X, right? And sometimes uh, the textbook using um, some other notation. Most, most important thing is do not forget uh, this bar here, everybody. Uh, do not forget that bar. Uh, bar, whenever you see the bar here means average, uh, average. Now, there's a notation here. I hope everybody can get this one. It's the uh, sigma summation notation. So whenever you see this notation, uh, summation i from one and two n. Uh, so let me see if I can write down, uh, let me see, I can draw something right here. Yes. Uh, draw something, okay. So that's the summation. Oh. Professor? Yeah. Uh, the bar that you circled, that's not an X, right? That's like a Greek symbol? Yeah, that's the uh, capital X, yeah. And then on the top, the bar means the average. Um, the notation we are using X here because we, uh, you see that we have X1, X2 up to Xn. So like we have N data points. Uh, by default, we are using like an X, the same X, but we are using a capital one, uh, capital X. And then uh, this notation here, so summation, you see that I is from one, I equal to one up to N, right? X, I, everybody, I is the index that we are using. Uh, some people say, I don't like I, I want to use J, that's also okay, right? You can use your favorite letter, right? X, J. J equal to one up to N, that's totally fine, right? Uh, so I, I would like to use some examples here to help you understand those four different definitions. So this example here, we have a data sequence, everybody. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine data points, right? So we are asking, can we find out what's the average, what's the mean? Right, so very straightforward. We add them, add them together, divided by nine data points. Right, so with the answer we got here, 30.5. Everybody, question. Why we have one decimal point here, right? If you do the calculation here, you will realize uh, we had round this into one decimal. Okay, so the question is, in general, how many decimal points we need to keep? So there's a lure of sum in statistics. This is actually also applied in general. How many data points we want to keep? Everybody, if you are checking the raw data sequence here, how many the decimal points here we have, like this one here, right? How many decimal points they have in the original data sequence? Everybody, zero, is that right? There's no, um, decimal points here. So our fundamental rule of sum is to tell you when we calculate the statistics, not only the mean, in general, we always skip one more decimal than from the original data sequence. So in that case, in the original data sequence, zero decimal points, we always keep one more, right? So we got 30.5.
That's the reason we have we kept one decimal point, right? Now, for example, if we in the original data sequence here, like one number here, say 30, right? Instead of 30, they have say um, 30.5 or like 30.6, right? I don't want to get confused, right? Say one decimal, right? So in that case, in the raw data sequence here, right? We have, uh, what's the decimal points we have? We have one decimal point. So when we calculate the statistics later, we always keep one more, right? In that case, we will keep one more than the original one because the original one here is 30.5. So 30.6, 30 then we need to keep two decimals here. I hope it's, it's clear uh, in general, how do we apply those, okay? Now, that's the first angle we see the central. The central. Now the second one here is the medium. Is the what do we mean by medium? Um, that's the middle point of an ordered data sequence. So in other words, we want to put the data in order. Everybody, we have nine data points. We put them in order. It's a very straightforward to find out where is the middle point. Thirty, right? So we put the medium here is what thirty point zero. Everybody, someone was asking, um, I mean, how about in a case that we have like 10 data points, right? So in that case, we have number five and the number six, right? There is no unique point that is right in the middle. Turns out we have two data points. They are both in the middle. So in that situation, the medium will be calculated as the average of those two data points. So that's the, for the case when you have even number of data points. Okay, so for the odd number of data points, line seven, right? You can easily find out the number in the middle, right? For the even case, um, two, four, six, eight, ten, and so on, right? Find those ones right in the middle. Okay, so that's for the medium middle point for the ordered data sequence. So you have to put the data sequence in order, either from high to low, low to high, either way is fine. Number three, mode. So by definition, the mode here is defined as the value of the data point that are happening the most often, everybody. So the same example here, right? Which data points happening the most often, everybody? So after we sort them, put them in order, you can easily see that, right? Which data points happening the most often? Everybody, that's 40, right? So uh, I see someone got the right answer, right? So yes, that's the case here. Uh, so uh, we can say the mode is 40. Uh, we can put the 40.0. Now, what if uh, someone will say, like another, I change the example a little bit different, right? Like this case here, right? You can see we have a two numbers here, 40 and 42, right? So they both happening twice. In that case, 40 and 42, they are both, we call this mode, right? The most uh, frequent, uh, data points happening, okay? And we have a, also have a special name for that by mode. We have two numbers. Now, a special case, another special case is this one. Like this data sequence here, each one happening only one time. So uh, in statistics, we say that uh, there is no mode. There is no mode, okay? Someone will say, um, can we say like every single data point is a mode? I mean, technically, yes, but it's not really that meaningful. Uh, the mode intuitively, we are trying to find out like one number that is a significant different from the other and has the happening the most of time, right? So actually we prefer that the other way to say uh, no mode. All right, so that's for the mode case, everybody. Um, how about the last one here, right? 
middle range. By definition, middle range is considered as the highest value plus the lowest value divided by two. So after you put the number in order, you can easily see that you added the minimum one, you added the maximum one divided by two, you got 30.0. So that's the middle range, everybody. So there are four different ways to say the central, uh, central point. The ones that we are using a lot, most of time, first one, mean, or you say average, right? Uh, the other case here, they are using, uh, for some other case, you may see. For example, the medium. Next time, if you are trying to see, like when they are trying to compare those housing price, for example, uh, in the newspaper or in the, like those uh, TV or news, right? They are trying to compare the housing price from Los Angeles County and compare with Orange County, right? They are going to use, most likely, they are going to use the medium price. They are not going to use the medium, the average, right? So, I mean, intuitively, why? Because you can imagine if we are using average, right? Like some single house, those like very, very expensive ones, right? Uh, like one house um, count for like a, maybe 100 other houses, right? Like a Kobe Bryant, I mean, those Beverly Hills, those houses, right? Uh, $50 million, something like that, right? Uh, so if, um, one, once we add those numbers, that will easy change our average a lot. So that's not fair to compare, right? So the uh, more reasonable way to compare the housing price, uh, next time you can check that is using the medium price. Uh, mode, this one was using a lot in the engineering side. Uh, my wife is working on the engineering. So uh, like she's doing those electronic um, wave format a lot. So this mode, uh, a lot of time, uh, she's using that. Uh, middle range is um, some other cases, not, um, not quite often, but it's only like some certain situations. So that's four different ways to see the central point. All right, uh, that's our first uh, part here in terms of the central uh, tendency. Now, this second example here, we call this uh, grouped data. What does that mean? Group data here, we have <clears throat> Um, like this table here, you can see this table is in terms of the hourly cost for the, uh, the workers, right? So uh, frequency, WI, they have a seven. That means like seven people, they are average like somehow uh, about this cost, right? It's 2.47 to 7.48, right? But you don't know exactly for each of those seven people was the hourly cost. You don't know that. You only know the range, right? Same as the second one. So we are given the information about the group, like how many people in this group and what's the range for this group, right? So we are trying to find out for this group data, can we still calculate average, right? The answer is yes, we can still do the calculation we call this weighted average calculation. Okay, everybody, this example here, uh, I don't require this example here. Uh, you can uh, consider this one uh, kind of um, cross out this example, okay? Uh, but I do require some more, uh, I consider this is more reality example for the GPA calculation, this case here, okay? So this case here, it is a group data. And we will show you how do we calculate the average based on this grouped data information. Uh, and you can actually apply the GPA calculation here to verify your GPA from the school, right? On the transcript, is that right or something wrong? You can verify by yourself. Everybody, how can we do that? So 
uh, say someone is taking four classes, okay? And uh, mass 10, I mean, that's our mass class. How many units we have? We have a three, right? And say at the end, someone got A, right? Physics, three units, uh, someone got a C, right? Biology, four units got a B. English composition, uh, two units got a D, right? Looks like that a person is pretty good at mathematics, right? Um, and then biology, uh, pretty bad at uh, English uh, composition, right? Uh, got a D, like that's usually my case, right? Um, and then we want to know, like for that semester, right? What's my GPA? Can we calculate that, everybody? So most, most of the schools, we are using this GPA system, everybody. If you got an A, then you got a four points for each of the units. So in other words, for the mass 10, that a person got an A, right? So because there are three units, each unit was four points each. So four multiplied by three, you got 12 points total for that mass 10. That's what we call points, right? Similarly, uh, if you got the B, then each credit or each unit, right? We are worth three points. If you got a C, you got a two points for each. You got a D, you got a one point for each. Everybody, how about the F? Zero point. So, I mean, you may see some people, they got a zero by GPA, which is possible, right? Now, similarly, we do all these calculation, how many points total, right? For the example biology, four units total, right? Each unit I got was three points. So four multiplied by three got a 12 points total. Physics, three multiplied by two got a six points total, right? English composition, because he or she got a D, right? Only one point each of the two units. So we've got a two points. And then everybody, we add in all those points together. All those points together. Okay, that will be our that will be our total points, right? So that's what you see uh, in the uh, numerator here. Adding all those points together, divided by everybody, total number of units for that is students, right? So you add three, three, four, two, got a total of twelve. That's a standard like four time students, is that right? So. Uh, we divided by 12, we got 2.7. That's the GPA for that students in that semester. Wow. So uh, next time when you got your transcripts, you can actually verify this, right? For all the class, uh, you can do that, right? I mean, you know, the school got this calculation from the computer, right? Who designed the algorithms on the computer? Our human being, right? I mean, what if, uh, human being make mistakes, right? Uh, I mean, most likely not, right? But what if sometimes, right? They have a GPA calculation mistakes. You can verify that. So that example here, I do require that. I hope you understand what's going on here, everybody, right? Um, <clears throat> let me see. This is for 3.1. 